writing with sophisticated academic tone. In college level writing, it's important to adopt a tone and style that are appropriate to an academic setting. In this course, we'll refer to this as academic tone. This is essentially the difference between the way academic writing should sound versus the way we commonly sound in everyday conversation. It is essential that you adopt these guidelines for the writing that you'll do in this course. Beyond this course, following these guidelines will help elevate the tone and style of your writing and thus leave a better impression on your readers. Avoid informal or conversational language. These might include phrases such as, you know, well, here's what I think, or other phrases that are common in speech but not generally seen in professional or formal writing. These kinds of phrases often serve as conversational buffers, but they aren't necessar necessary in academic writing. Don't use phrases telling the reader what you're going to say. Instead, just say it. For example, don't start a paragraph with a phrase such as, now I'd like to discuss. Instead, simply state your first point. Don't use slang. These are expressions that are often not literal and only well understood within a specific cultural or age group. Slang expressions are often too informal and can be misunderstood in cultural settings different than your own. Avoid using questions. When possible, make statements instead. Questions create the pretense of a conversation. However, an academic essay or paper is not an actual conversation between people. You and your reader cannot actually speak to each other. While this method of using a question to begin a paper is a common convention in earlier grade levels, it is generally less sophisticated and overly formulaic approach than you'd want to employ as you seek to raise the level of your writing to the, that expected in college composition. Also avoid asking a question and then answering it. This is generally unnecessary and wastes space. Asking a pointed or rhetorical question can sometimes be useful if you are trying to get the reader to contemplate an idea. However, it loses its power if it isn't a rhetorical question. If it leads to a simple yes or no answer, or if, if it is buried amidst a series of questions. Focus on the topic, not yourself. Do not allow the focus to be on you, the writer. The focus should remain on the topic itself. This is why you generally want to avoid too many references to yourself in your essays. Using examples of personal experience can be good, but they are only worth using if they help the reader understand the issue better or help illustrate the idea that you are trying to present. Don't use personal experiences to simply show that you connect to the issue being discussed. Avoid unnecessary use of first person, so words such as I, except when relating personal experience. In most college writing assignments, you should only refer to yourself in the, if the writing prompt explicitly asks you to discuss yourself or your own experiences. Thus, it is generally best not to use phrases like, I think, or I believe. In fact, using these kinds of phrases often decreases the potential worthiness of the ideas presented as the acknowledged subjectivity may lead readers to more easily dismiss their, the ideas that are being presented. Instead of prefacing a point with a phrase such as, I think, simply state the point without employing first person. For example, Instead of, I think marijuana should be legalized, simply state, marijuana should be legalized. When you write an essay or a paper, you generally should not think of your professor as your only intended audience. Rather, you should consider the possibility that your essay could be read by any potential reader. Thus, it's best to imagine a generic anonymous audience. All you should assume about them is that they're intelligent and can read college-level writing. Obviously, don't be rude or insulting to your reader. Don't assume the reader will disagree with you about the issue that you're discussing. Don't make assumptions about the reader's cultural background, gender, 
religion, sexual orientation, heritage, or any beliefs. Respecting the reader also means it's generally not appropriate to discuss religion or your personal religious beliefs as justification for a point that requires using logical reasoning. In doing so, you would end up excluding those who may not share the same religious beliefs. Rem remember, religion is about faith, that which one accepts without logical backing. However, academic writing requires the use of logic. Of course, this doesn't limit your ability to believe something deeply, but in most academic writing, the objective is generally not self-expression. Instead, it is to illustrate your intended analysis or argument to your reader in a convincing and logically demonstrated manner. You can't effectively convince people if you end up excluding those with different beliefs, belief systems. An obvious exception to this would be any writing assignment that specifically asks you to discuss your personal religious beliefs. So distinguishing between these writing situations is important in college level courses. For the assignments within this course, you should adopt the overall approach uh, suggested above. However, in different writing circumstances, you may be required to narrow your potential audience to a specific set of readers. Thus, appropriate academic tone can differ depending on the directions within the writing prompt itself. Don't point at the reader. That's what the word you technically does. It points directly at the reader, often with unintended consequences. Therefore, it is generally best not to use the word you. This is usually not appropriate because it ends up becoming too conversational or may indicate assumptions being made about the reader. Instead, substitute for the word you a word such as one or a person. In most academic essays, it is inappropriate to tell the reader what to do. Instead, give them ideas about how they should view a particular issue, but respect their judgment enough to figure out, out about what they should personally do about it. Even in a persuasive essay, where you are expected to advocate a specific course of action, don't phrase that in a manner where you are telling the reader what to do. So instead of, you should recycle, this is better. Recycling should be encouraged because it is beneficial for the environment. Don't make up facts or statistics in order to make your point. Only use these kinds of specifics when you know them to be accurate. Don't use phrases that make you seem uncertain about the statements you are making. For example, it's not useful to say, I could be wrong, but I think. Instead, show confidence in the ideas that you're presenting. Avoid the phrase, in my opinion. This is generally not necessary in a well-written essay because when you, are not, when you are giving opinions in an academic essay, you are backing them up with a logical argument. Pay attention to style and vocabulary. Avoid using too many short sentences in a row. Instead, it is useful to vary the structure and length of your sentences. Often, an easy way to do this is to combine short sentences, not simply by using conjunctions such as and, but, or, or, but also through the use of subordinate clauses and phrases. Try to avoid repetition of words, particularly in close proximity to each other. Substituting a synonym or rephrasing the sentence will fix this problem. It is generally not necessary to repeat your ideas. If you initially explain your ideas clearly and indicate their importance at the time, then it is not necessary to repeat them unless you are further building upon them or summarizing at the end of an essay.